Hey everybody. So our investigation of colligative properties continues. So we're talking about the four different colligative properties, boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, osmotic pressure, and vapor pressure lowering. And we already investigated the idea of vapor pressure lowering and how it was quantified somewhat effectively through the use of Raoult's law. But we had a couple of important conditions to remember. Raoult's law really only works best when you're talking about dilute solutions. So in other words, when the mole fraction of the solvent is closer to one, so in other words, you have very little solute, then Raoult's law works okay. The other condition we had was that the solute particles themselves could not add to the vapor pressure. So in my cartoon, you only saw solvent molecules evaporating because the solute itself was non-volatile. Fancy way of saying it itself doesn't evaporate. In this video, we're going to change that condition. We're going to allow the solute particles themselves to contribute to the vapor pressure so the solute can evaporate. That's going to bring us to this part of the video, to this part of the slide down here. All right, so let's zoom in there. Let me move myself out of the way a little bit. So let's take a look at what we've got going on here. So, as I just said, we're going to talk about solutions with multiple volatile components. So we are talking about two different situations. We could have a liquid solute in a liquid solvent. So, for example, we could talk about maybe methanol dissolved in water or ethanol dissolved in water, or hexanes dissolved in pentanes. These are all different liquid um, solvents, and so they can both evaporate. They can both contribute to the vapor pressure. Or we could talk about a gas solute. Remember when we talked about the effect of temperature on solubility? We talked a little bit about gas solutes there. Well, we can also talk about gas solutes being uh, a participant and how they would affect the vapor pressure. So we could have a gas solute in the liquid solvent. So I'm going to limit myself to only two things, what I'll call A and B. So both A and B can have vapor pressures. Okay. So how do we account for this using a sort of Raoult's Law analysis? Well, I want to draw your attention to this chart down here. What I've got here on the x-axis is I'm keeping track of the mole fraction of component B. So if the mole fraction of B is equal to 1, then that tells me the mole fraction of A has got to be 0. I don't have any of A, whatever A may be. If my mole fraction of B is 0, then that tells me the only thing I have would be A. So I've got these two extremes, okay? And so on one end of the extreme, if the only thing I have is B, so the mole fraction of B is equal to 1, then the vapor pressure of my mixture is going to simply be equal to the vapor pressure of pure um, solvent B, whatever it might be, right? P superscript 0 of B. On the other end, if my mole fraction of B is 0, so the only thing I have is A, then my system's vapor pressure is described as being P sub A superscript 0, so the pure vapor pressure of component A. What about conditions in between? Well, it turns out it's actually fairly straightforward to come up with an idealized vapor pressure. It turns out that the total vapor pressure is equal to the sums of the partial vapor pressures. Do you remember Dalton's law of partial pressures? It's the same idea here. If you have gas A and gas B, then the total pressure in that system is the sum of the partial pressure of A and the partial pressure of B. That's what I'm showing right here. So the total vapor pressure in my AB system, let's say A and B are both liquids, so they both can evaporate a little bit, would be the partial vapor pressure of A plus the partial vapor pressure of B. And according to Raoult's law, the partial vapor pressure of A is equal to chi A P zero A. And the partial vapor pressure of B is equal to chi B uh, pure vapor pressure of B. P, B, superscript 0. So it's simply the same idea that you've already learned before. The total vapor pressure, the total pressure would be the sums of the partial pressures. So we can apply that idea to Raoult's law. Now one of the interesting things that's going to end up happening here is that you're going to have a different composition in the liquid phase 
compared to the vapor phase. So we might have a mole fraction of A of, let's say, 0.3, and therefore a mole fraction of B of 0.7. So that would describe what's going on in the solution. If I have a 0.3 and 0.7 mole fraction of A, mole fraction of B in solution, okay, in the liquid phase. Then the composition in the vapor phase, though, is going to be different. It's going to be proportional to those mole fractions as well as the pure vapor pressures of component A and B. So the idea here is the composition of the liquid, liquid mixture that's in equilibrium with its vapor, those two compositions in the liquid phase and the solution phase versus the uh, gas phase are going to be different, but we can actually evaluate those, and we'll take a look at some sample problems um, that help us do that. All right, one other thing I want to draw your attention to, this is kind of a sidebar, and it has to do with something called Henry's Law that I'm highlighting over here. Maybe I'll just try to zoom into that a little bit more. All right, so Henry's Law. Henry's Law is an attempt to deal with um, what's going on in the composition based on the partial pressure available of any component. So what I'm trying to figure out is how much of, let's say, a gas, okay, this works best if we think about gaseous solutes. And so let's think of a particular example of maybe carbon dioxide dissolving in water, right? That makes soda water, the, the fizz that's associated with the soda that we might drink. That's from carbon dioxide. So the question is, how much carbon dioxide gas is dissolved in the solvent at any given pressure? Well, it's described here by, whoops, by Henry's Law, okay? The amount of my gaseous solute, let's call that component B, in solution, so chi sub B, is going to be proportional to the partial vapor pressure of that component B that's sitting on top of the solution, and it's equated by a proportionality constant that we call K. This is the Henry's Law constant, and it's, a, it's an attribute of a particular solute solvent combination. So Henry's Law actually does a pretty good job of describing different deviations that we might have in our solution system. So coming back to the diagram here, these blue lines show the ideal Raoult's Law case, and then these red lines I'm taking as examples of positive deviations. So the question is then, right, how much, um, how much of component B might I have in my solution based on the partial vapor pressure of B? Well, it turns out that so long as the concentration of component B is fairly low, so chi sub B is closer to zero, I can use Henry's Law to describe the behavior of the solution with respect to B at low concentrations. So at low concentrations of B, the positive deviation is somewhat of a straight line initially. And that straight line can be described by Henry's Law. So Henry's Law really works best when we want to think about taking a gaseous solute and dissolving it in a solvent. The amount of gas that can be dissolved in the solution, in other words, its concentration in solution, which I'm showing here is a mole fraction of B, is proportional to the partial vapor pressure or the partial pressure of that solute component. So you want to know how much carbon dioxide is in your soda? Well, then you need to know what the partial pressure of carbon dioxide was above the solvent as the soda was being made. And you also have to know this uh, proportionality constant of Henry's Law. Okay? We'll do some practice problems with this as we go through. So that gives us a way of dealing with Henry's Law, or I should say really Raoult's Law, looking at vapor pressures when I have more than one component that can be volatile, that can add to the vapor pressure of the system. So I can put a partial pressure for each component directly from Raoult's Law. So if I have two liquids that are mixing and they both can evaporate, I can still evaluate the vapor pressure of that liquid, liquid component system. All right, so next up we're going to take a look at the issues of boiling point elevation 
and freezing point depression as we work our way through some more of these colligative properties.